Hello friends, in this video I am going to discuss Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954. Food is one of the basic necessities for sustenance of life. Pure, fresh and healthy food is most essential for the good health of the people. On the other hand, adulteration of foodstuffs was widespread and persistent that nothing short of a somewhat drastic remedy in the form of a comprehensive legislation became the need of the hour. Therefore, to check this kind of anti-social evil, a concerted and determined onslaught was legislated and introduced by the government of India, that is the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act. So, in this video, we will discuss the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954. So, now the question is, what is the objective of Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954? Following are the important objectives. The first one is to protect people from the adulterated and poisonous food. To restrain the sale of substandard food and to protect the interests of the consumers by eliminating fraudulent practices. Next, meaning and definition of food. According to this act, any stuff used as food or drink for human consumption other than drugs and water is known as food. It includes any article which normally enters into or is used in the composition or preparation of human food. Next, any flavoring matter or condiments mixed in edible stuff and any other article which the central government may have in regard to its use, nature, substance or quality declared by notification in the official gazette as food for the purposes of this act. Now come to the meaning of adulteration or adulterant. Any material which is or could be employed for the purposes of adulteration. That is adulterant. Now next, concept of adulteration. An article of food will be known as adulterated if the article sold by a vendor is not of the nature, substance or quality demanded by the purchaser and is to his prejudice or is not of the nature, substance or quality which it purports or represented to be. Next. If the article contains any other substance which affects or if the article is so processed as to affect injuriously the nature, substance or quality thereof. Next, if any inferior or cheaper substance has been substituted wholly or in part for the article so as to affect injuriously the nature, substance or quality thereof. Next, if any constituent of the article has been wholly or in part abstracted so as to affect injuriously the nature, substance or quality thereof. Next, if the article had been prepared, packed or kept under insanitary conditions whereby it has become contaminated or injurious to health. Next, if the article consists wholly or in part of any filthy, vitreid, rotten, decomposed or diseased animal or vegetable substance or is insect infested or is otherwise unfit for human consumption. Next, If the article is obtained from a diseased animal, 
if the article contains any poisonous or other ingredient which renders it injurious to health. If the container of the article is composed, whether wholly or in part, of any poisonous or deleterious substance which renders its contents injurious to health. If any coloring matter other than that prescribed in respect thereof is present in the article, or if the amounts of the prescribed coloring matter which is present in the article are not within the prescribed limits of variability. Next, if the article contains any prohibited preservative or permitted preservative in excess of the prescribed limits. If the quality or purity of the article falls below the prescribed standard or its constituents are present in quantities not within the prescribed limits of variability which renders it injurious to health. Next, if the quality or purity of the article falls below the prescribed standard or its constituents are present in quantities not within the prescribed limits of variability but which doesn't render its injurious to health. Now, sale of certain admixtures prohibited. As per this act, no person shall either by himself or by any servant or agent sell cream which has not been prepared exclusively from milk or which contains less than 25% of milk fat. Next, milk which contains any added water. Ghee which contains any added matter not exclusively derived from milk fat. Next, a skimmed milk, fat abstracted as milk. A mixture of two or more edible oils as an edible oil. Banaspati to which ghee or any other substance has been added. Turmeric containing any foreign substance. Mixture of coffee and any other substance except chikori. Dahi or curd not prepared from boiled, pasteurized or sterilized milk. Milk or a milk product specified in Appendix B containing a substance not found in milk except as provided in the rules. Now, next one is the procedure for sampling and analysis. The food inspector of the concerned region can enter and inspect any such place where any article of food is manufactured or stored for sale or stored for the manufacture of any other article of food for sale or exposed or exhibited for sale or where any adult adulterant is manufactured or kept and take samples of such article of food or adult trend for analysis. So, the inspection, sampling and analysis are normally done by the food inspector of concerned area and if he finds in any discrepancy, then he follows the following steps. That is, he issues the notice in writing then and there to the seller indicating his intention. Three samples are taken and the signature of the seller is affixed to them. One sample is sent for analysis to public analyst under intimation to the local health authority. And the other two samples are sent to the local health authority for further reference. Penalties If the person found guilty, then he will be punished with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than six months and up to three years and with fine up to 1,000 rupees. Next, important miscellaneous provisions. 
following are the important miscellaneous provisions first manufacturers distributors and dealers to give warranty it means no manufacturer or distributor of or dealer in any article of food shall sell article to any vendor unless he also gives a warranty in writing in the prescribed form about the nature and quality of such article to the vendor next vendor to disclose the name etc of the person from whom the article of food was purchased every vendor of an article of food shall if so required discloses to the food inspector the name address and other particulars of the person from whom he purchased the article of food now some other miscellaneous provisions if any extraneous additions of coloring matter are added the same should be indicated on the labels from the labels the blending composition of ingredients should be clear to the customer sale of kesari gram individually or as an admixture is prohibited prohibition of use of carbide acetyl gas in ripening fruit is prohibited sale of ghee having less register value than that specified for the area where such ghee is sold is prohibited restriction on sale of till oil produced in tripura assam and west bengal restriction on sale of carbia callosa and honeydew restriction on sale of kangra tea sale or use for sale of admixtures of ghee or butter prohibited restriction on use and sale of artificial sweeteners use of flesh of naturally dead animals or false prohibited sale of insect damaged dry fruits and nuts is restricted addition of artificial sweetener should be mentioned on the label sale of food colors without license prohibited containers not made of plastic material which is not according to the standards are not to be used a store of insecticides in the same premises where food articles are stored is prohibited milk powder or condensed milk can be sold only with isi mark use of more than one type of preservative is prohibited no insecticides should be sprayed on the food items and oils can be manufactured only in factories licensed for such purpose so this is all about the prevention of food adulteration act 1954